Look, I rarely cover Twitter beefs because I think that this is the indie media equivalent of shitposting. So I try not to indulge in these types of, you know, quite frankly, sensationalist stories. Although I'm going to have to indulge in this instance because for whatever reason, I really enjoyed the Twitter beef between Ron Perlman and and uh, Matt Gates, as well as Ted Cruz. Now, Ron Perlman, if you don't know, he is known for his roles in Sons of Anarchy and Hellboy, and he dunked on Ted Cruz and Matt Gates in a really spectacular way, and I don't know why I like this so much. I hope this doesn't make me a liberal, because yas queening to celebrities on Twitter is a very liberal thing to do. With that being said, um, I just want to talk about this because it put a smile on my face. So it all started when Ron Perlman responded to comments by Donald Trump and Matt Gates about the U.S. soccer team, where he says, The U.S. soccer team called, and you guessed it, said they couldn't give any less of a fuck about what you two dipshits think. Now I'm going to pause there because I'm not going to go back and find what Donald Trump and Matt Gates said, but this is the initiation of the beef between the two of them. So Matt Gates responded saying, This racial justice warrior had no problem in Hollywood portraying the white supremacist leader of a motorcycle gang, Sons of Anarchy. Ron Perlman responded, saying, Yes, sir, so true. So rewarding playing assholes on TV. Tell me, sir, how is it actually being one? Pretty good response. Now, left without a good comeback, Matt Gates responds, predictably, with some Republican classics, saying, Honestly, the fact that Hollywood thinks I'm an asshole is a badge of honor, okay? You wouldn't be tweeting about me if my message weren't true and effective. Threatens your wokeness. How triggered, oh, he pulled out the T word, will you be when Donald Trump is reelected? More or less when crooked lost. And I think that this tweet right here kind of expressed how most people read that. Actually, it's a badge of honor. Because, I mean, the minute a Republican starts losing some type of beef or, you know, a spat, they bust out the, are you triggered? Are you triggered? You must be triggered. Are you a snowflake? They have nothing else. Like, it's predictable. You could absolutely predict with a relatively high degree of certainty exactly what they're going to say. And the minute they start losing an argument, they bring out, are you triggered? I mean, <laughs> these guys are just one-trick ponies. And in the case of Matt Gates, this is someone who is a fascist who just two weeks ago said that the U.S. government should hunt down Antifa as we do the terrorists in the Middle East. So this person is just as horrible as a human being can be. Um, and yet he is, uh, you know, talking about how, oh, how horrible Matt or, or Ron Perlman was to be portraying a white supremacist on television. You're a white supremacist in real life. So have a seat. Now, they go back and forth for a while. We're not going to get into all of it. Ron Perlman brings up that his district is gerrymandered uh, and then calls him out for bringing a Holocaust denier to the State of the Union. And then he drops this gem. P.S. You're lucky for this guy, Matt. If it weren't for him, you'd be the ugliest politician walking. Now, <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but I actually disagree with it. I, I think that if we are um, trying to rank ugliness, you've got to put like Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, um, they're all definitely up there. Um, and also, um, I'm blanking on his name now. There's another politician. Oh, no, I guess he's not necessarily a politician anymore. David Duke. Very weird-looking individual. Looks plastic. Um, but this was just, like, out of nowhere. And certainly, I would put uh, Ted Cruz, like, near the top of that list if we're going to be immature enough to talk about the ugliness of politicians. Um, but Ted Cruz then, <laughs> speaking of him, jumps in for whatever reason and he tweets at Ron Perlman saying, Listen, Hellboy, you talk good game when you've got Hollywood makeup and stuntmen, but I'll bet $10,000 to the non-political charity of your choice that you couldn't last five minutes in the wrestling ring with Jim Jordan without getting pinned. You up for it? Or does your publicist say, too risky? Now, I want to pause for a moment because I don't know why Ted Cruz decided to insert himself into this beef between Ron Perlman and Matt Gates. But this was a terrible idea for Ted Cruz because he got dunked on pretty hard. So Ron Perlman responded saying, wait, is this the Ted Cruz? Holy shit, man. Is this the same guy who let little Donnie call his wife a dog and his father an assassin and now kisses his ass? Yo, can I get your autograph, man? 
He also tweeted, I'll tell you what, Teddy Boy, that's a little bit uh, cringe, the use of Teddy Boy, but he says, uh, since mentioning Jim Jordan and wrestling is problematic, why don't we say fuck him and just make it you and me? I'll give $50,000 to Black Lives Matter and you can keep all the taxpayer money you were thinking of spending. Ted Cruz then responded, um, kind of sidestepping that offer, saying, I get it, you're rich, but apparently soft. You sure seem scared to wrestle Jordan, whom you keep insulting. Can't take the heat? Need to get a manicure? Now, I acknowledge that if I read that in a Ted Cruz voice, it would have been better. But Ted Cruz, like the biggest cuck in all of the United States Senate, is trying to... Uh, I don't know, make some comment about Ron Perlman's masculinity. This is just weird. Like, what are you doing? You're a United States senator. What are you doing? And you are trying to get Jim Jordan to fight, or Ron Perlman to agree to fight Jim Jordan, and then he offers to box you instead or wrestle, whatever they're trying to do, and you sidestep it, and then after sidestepping it and basically running away from his offer, you still have the nerve to say, oh, well, you're the pussy. I mean, this, <laughs> this this is stupid. This is America in 2020, so I think this story really represents it. Ron Perlman responds saying, Teddy, Teddy, what kind of motherfucker offers to have another guy, probably asleep at the time, kick another guy's ass? He also says, you know, Ted, I've been giving this some thought. Leave Jim Jordan home and give me 10 minutes with you and Mitch McConnell. Let's see what else you motherfuckers can obstruct besides justice. All we need is a time, place, and a few EMTs standing by. Let me know. So, um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> now, as an SJW, I think it is my responsibility to acknowledge the toxic masculinity that was put on full display here. <laughs> <laughs> but um look this was a really weird exchange and i wanted to talk about this especially because it really i think demonstrates why ted cruz is always picked on by people in america he's so weird not only are his policies repugnant but he's just a weird person like you challenge ron perlman to a fight with someone else and then when he offers to fight you or box you whatever they're gonna do again um then you basically say oh, you're a pussy you don't want to fight jim jordan no i want to fight you oh you don't, you must not want to fight jim jordan you're a pussy what is happening guys this is weird this is strange ted cruz needs to stop getting into twitter spats because it's making him even more unlikable and i get his face is less punchable now that he has the beard um it helps me have a less punchable face as well but you have to stop doing things like this, Ted Cruz, because, look, at the end of the day, we can laugh about this. We can say, you know, oh, this is funny. This isn't real news. But you are a United States senator getting into a Twitter spat with an actor. And you want to, like, have some sort of boxing match with them. Like, how about you do your job, pass legislation, introduce legislation that will give Americans relief who have lost their jobs due to COVID-19, pass legislation curtailing police brutality, do something other than sit on your ass and lick Donald Trump's boot. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Now, I will say, Ron Perlman must be commended for doing a good job. I think that in the event I were to ever get into a Twitter beef with him, I would probably have better clapbacks because his clapbacks are very, like, um, cringy, like the teddy boy. I think that's weird. Like, you want to leave that you know, to the side that has very strong boomer boomer energy. But uh, I mean, I think he did a good job at dunking on Matt Gates and Ted Cruz. And with how loathsome these two individuals are, uh, especially Matt Gates, who is a fascist, I think that anyone who's going to draw attention to their weaselness is important. But I think that I'm trying to like extract as much substance out of this as I possibly can. And now the well is dry. Uh, this is just a funny story that I wanted to talk about. Uh, and that's that's basically me admitting <laughs> that I will try to do better because I found this funny. Uh, it put a smile on my face. And in a year so bizarre as 2020, I think that we've got to really hang on to anything that distracts us from the chaos. And this certainly did that. Helped me. Hopefully it'll help you. Um, but otherwise, I will try not to cover Twitter beefs um, in the future. But uh, I'm I'm only human. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?